Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In this class, we discuss everything social science research from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, the elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. In research methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our lesson today where we are going to discuss significance of the study, the limitations of the study, and limitations of the study. Remember, we are still discussing sections in chapter 1 of the research proposal. In our previous lessons, we have discussed section 1.6, which is on hypothesis. In this lesson, we have explained the meaning of hypothesis and the types of hypotheses that you need to state. We have said that ideally the researcher states alternative non-directional hypotheses in chapter 1 and then when they come to analyzing data in chapter 4, they write it as a null hypothesis because we test the null. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to state the important sections in the significance of the study and differentiate between the limitations and limitations of the study. So these are the sections of chapter 1 of the research proposal. So far, we have discussed section 1.1 to 1.6. So today we discuss section 1.7 to 1.9. And just a reminder that a section that starts with one point means that it is a section in chapter 1. So that is why all these 12 sections are one point because they are all in chapter 1. So we look at section 1.7 which is significance of the study. Why do we do research? We do research because we want to solve social problems. We want to find solutions to social problems. Therefore, the problem that we want to investigate must be significant. So, significance of the study answers the questions. Why is my study important? To whom is it important to? And what benefit will occur if I do this study? So, as a researcher, you normally use resources, both money and time, to conduct research. So you wouldn't want to engage your money and your time in an activity that is not significant. We therefore write section 1.7 so that we can tell the world that this study is contributing to the growth of the body of knowledge in my area it also discusses to whom the study is or will benefit. Will it be the society, my country, the government, the community, or who will consume my findings and they find them significant? Uh, another thing that the section describes is that it also gives or explains the impact of the study to the environment, to the discipline, to education, to science and technology, etc., etc. Then we move to section 1.8, which is on the limitations of the study, and some institutions write it as the scope of the study. Now, some students confuse the limitations and limitations. Now, these two terms are not related at all. When we talk about delimitations or the scope, delimitations means the walls that the researcher puts around their study. So, delimitation provides the researcher with an opportunity to explain the boundaries of the study. That is, 
what aspects of my study will I cover and what am I not covering? So when we say they are the walls that you put around uh, your study, it therefore means that you are explaining those boundaries in terms of this is the much that I will do and this is what I will not be involved in. And that is why each delimitation must be accompanied by an explanation of why. Delimitations are either geographical or methodological. So once you delimit yourself to a geographical area, it is not because it is convenient to you. I cannot do a study at the University of Nairobi because I work there. You only do a study because there is a need and there is a problem which in 1.7 we have said is significant. So if I am conducting a study at the University of Nairobi which is a geographical delimitation, what is the reason? That is why every delimitation must be accompanied by an explanation of why. For instance, this study aims at establishing whether there is a significant difference in performance between Bachelor of Education Science on campus and distance study students at the University of Nairobi. So the study will delimit itself to the University of Nairobi. You can see this study or this delimitation is followed by why. It will be done at the University of Nairobi because it is the a dual mode university in Kenya which offers a science course through both online and a distance learning mode. That is a geographical delimitation. The researcher is delimiting him or herself to a study or to carrying a study at the University of Nairobi and they have given a reason why. Now let's look at the second one. The study will be anchored on correlational survey design. Why? Because the researcher wants to establish the relationship between demographic characteristics, learning environment, and instructional methods on the academic performance of the Bachelor of Education Science on campus and distance study learners at the University of Nairobi. That is a methodological delimitation. The researcher is using a method, and the method or the design is correlational. They did not select the method just for the sake. There is a reason why they did not use cross-sectional survey, but they want to use correlational survey. So please remember, every delimitation, whether geographical or methodological, must be accompanied by an explanation of why. And we don't do research out of convenience because it is near my place or because it is where I work or because it is convenient to you. We do research because there is a problem. And finally, we look at limitations of the study. Now, limitations are the unforeseen factors that are likely to hinder the investigator from carrying out his or her study as planned. So these unforeseen are likely to hinder you as a researcher from accomplishing your objectives and they are unforeseen. And these factors may include changing weather conditions, changing political climate, you know there can be chaos, the issue of language, all those are limitations. Now why are they limitations? Because you may go to the field, there were, were no tension or there was no tension in that area, but during your data collection, tension may arise. So what will you do so that your study is not affected and so that you are still able to achieve your objective? That is why a limitation must be followed by an explanation of how. This means the measures that the researcher will put in place to ensure that the stated limitation does not hinder the success of the study. So now you can see there is no relationship between delimitation and limitation. Again, the researcher must be very careful not to invalidate his or her study by showing that the study was faced by too many limitations. 
And because we are saying limitations are unforeseen, there are some institutions that will require their students to write the limitations after their fieldwork, while others require them to state them before they go to the field. So it just depends on your institution. So you may write them after or you may think through your study and come up with the limitations or those factors that you feel may hinder you from achieving your objectives. And like the period that we are in, when you look at the COVID issue, the COVID uh, situation, this is likely to hinder the success of the study because you may not have a crowd maybe where you may give them the questionnaire. But what will you do so that you are still able to accomplish the objective? So let's look at this example. So this researcher was able to identify two limitations. One was an cooperation of some participants because there was fear that their information will be used against them. So how did the researcher assure these uh, participants of their confidentiality? Or how did the researcher mitigate this limitation? It was by assuring them of their confidentiality. Another limitation is the language and the researcher explains that majority of the people he or she was dealing with they are only literate in their mother tongue. So how did the researcher mitigate this limitation? By engaging a research assistant who is conversant with the local language. So note that delimitation is followed by an explanation of why and it can either be geographical or methodological whereas limitation is always followed by an explanation of how and these are factors that they are unforeseen now i see i see students writing limitations of money and time are those two little limitations i don't think so because you have planned yourself, even in your research proposal, we normally write our work plan, we write our budget. So you have already come up with what you will be doing at what point and how much you require so that you know whether you need to look for external funding or whether how you are going to fund your proposal. Therefore, these are not unforeseen. They are things that you already know you require. So money and time may not be appropriate limitations because remember we have defined limitations as unforeseen factors that may hinder you from achieving your objective. So this brings us to the end of our lesson. In our lesson today we have explained section 1.7 significance of the study, 1.8 delimitations of the study and 1.9 which is limitations of the study are sections in chapter 1 of the research proposal. In our next lesson we are going to discuss section 1.10 to 1.12 which will bring us to the end of chapter 1 of the research proposal. But before then Make sure you visit the researchmethodsclass.com website where you can watch the full research methods course. You can also access other courses on SPSS and M&D consultancy. You are also able to book for consultation and you can also buy the research methods ebook. So see you in our next lesson as we talk about section 1.10 to 1.12 which will bring us to the end of chapter 1 of the research proposal.